So we mentioned if Jeff had, had brought it up before now, when do you finally find out, hey, Jeff's going to be starting a promotion? After after I got out of jail, like when I was on house arrest, Jeff had started it. And I we had been in conversations about, hey, man, I'm going to be out, off of this in a couple of weeks and I can do, you know what I mean? And so it so it wasn't long after that IWA thing. And again, I, I was uh, in and out of, of consciousness uh, for the, all this period of time. But one happened right after the other. I know you're excited to get involved in it, but what's your thoughts? I mean, what was your reaction internally? Jeff's going to start a promotion. Can he do it? Do you think it's going to be successful? What are you thinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, I, I've trusted Jeff Jarrett ever since I met him. And uh, that that may be, uh, I, I kind of feel that way about a lot of people. That may be a fault, but he's never he's never steered me in the wrong direction. I've always trusted Jeff's business acumen, and I believe with all my heart, he can do anything he sets his mind to. Um, and truth be told, when he got released and I got hired into this position, I knew for a fact I'm underqualified if if we're two in the running. Then I learned, oh no, he was in a higher position than I was because <laughs> he's a smart dude, man. His brain works in a different uh on a different level than than like mine does. Mine barely works on any level at all, but <laughs> he he's got a he's a smart guy that has big picture vision. And I and I I kind of just have take your temperature and what's what's happening right now. And we can do something with that. But as far as tomorrow, I don't know, you know? Um, so yeah, I knew Jeff could do it. So you were talking about TNA and what did you think of this business model, weekly pay-per-views compared to weekly television? Well, it was definitely new at the time, but I do think if you think about it, uh, it was tip, literally dipping your toe into the water of a streaming service or that, that mm -hmm. idea of a weekly uh, or, or monthly pay by subscription kind of thing. You know what I mean? So I, I, I think it was kind of a, a weird way of moving in the right direction, the way things are now. Um, and so, look, I, it, while it was different, uh, again, wasn't thinking about business at all. Right. Got told a to figure. I'll give you this much a week. If you come work here, you dang right. I'm there. Um, because that much a week could keep the lights on. And, uh, and, and we drove every week, me and my dad and brother drove every week. Sometimes we rode with, uh, Paul bearer, or Percy. Uh, sometimes it was just us. And so look, we, I, I had a blast doing it. Um, I, yes, I knew Jeff could do it. The business model was wonky, but it didn't matter to me because, uh, I didn't care. You're in the <laughs> business with your friends. Honest. Yeah. 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 Paying the bills, and, like you said. Yeah. And um, things were changing. You know what I mean? There was, it was a growing part of this whole. And look, I, I'm just a, an ex wrestler who just talks about his drug use a lot, but it seems like it was a changing time in the period of uh, content consumption and how you find and purchase that content. And so I, I don't think, I think actually it will be looked on uh, upon positively when you look in retrospect to that model. Now, maybe that model gets, uh, evolves a little, you know what I mean? And makes it more, more prominent, but it was a good try, you know what I mean? And so, so I think it was kind of a step in that direction anyway. As far as you getting back into the ring and getting back into the business, was that six months did it end up being healthy for you? I know you said it, you know, it took a while to set in, no. but was no. that a healthy well, time? No, I didn't do anything physically. I wasn't working out. I wasn't doing anything. So I gained weight when I got to TNA, I was out of shape. I'll never forget. Like the first big match I had was with Jeff, uh, over this whole, you know, the whole thing of me and him always had a, had a something, an angle going. So it, it was, it was. I was just bad out of shape and he carried me through it. And it's, I remember two times in my career that I couldn't carry myself through the match physically. And I kind of got drugged through it. And one of us, one of them is here with Jeff Jarrett and another one is down the road a little bit, but that's still TNA with Kurt Angle and the match was fought over Jeff Jarrett. So, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Those were the two times I literally felt like, man, I was a hindrance in the ring rather than an addition. You know what I mean? And it was you know, just because I, because I don't have wind. I didn't have any wind. I was fat out of shape. <laughs> I mean, well, that's just how, that's just the truth. When you come into TNA and you're talking with Jeff about saying, Hey, I got this promotion. We want you to come in. 
Um, how are you on discussing money? Is are you at, did he ask for a friend discount or is he just trying to help you out? Was it no, hard to no, separate no. getting back into the business with your friendship? No, it's it's look, it's not at all. He gave me an offer that I thought was fair and I took it. And that's look, I would have probably taken uh half that, but but <laughs> I, he didn't offer half that. So so we didn't have to go there. Um but look, I it, I wasn't the highest paid guy in the show, in the room, that's for dang sure. Um but I wasn't the lowest paid guy either, or I might've been on par with that guy <laughs> closer than the top guy, but, but he took care of me. And that's, I had no problem accepting the offer. And, and again, it wasn't huge numbers, but it's, it paid my bills and uh, kept me high until I got high in a production meeting and got fired. Have you, <laughs> <laughs> I don't usually do it. That'll have do you it. ever, have you ever had a problem come up when it's, uh, maybe dealing with numbers with a friend. Hey, we're friends, but we got to do a business deal. Has that ever been an issue or has it not, been smooth? Not sailing? over, not over numbers. Like yes, friendship and employment have come into play mm -hmm. uh, on a couple of different occasions. I'm not going to talk about them specifically. It's with a couple of different people, but it's, it never over money. Uh, I'll say that. I think it's just over philosophy and different, uh, different scenarios that popped up at the time, but it was different things have come between my friends and, and the work, but it was never a dollar figure. You mentioned going in and, and finding out he, Oh, he's actually ahead of me. He's above me in this yeah, totem yeah. pole. W were you ever worried? I mean, you said you always knew you trusted him and knew he was going to take care of you. Yeah. Was that ever a thing? Hey, my buddy and his father's going to be my boss basically. Um, not for me. It wasn't yeah. at all. You know what I mean? Like it's honestly, that's just what that I always looked up to Jeff that as the above me. I, I still do to be quite honest with you. And, and that's, I, it's just because I put him on a, on a, a pedestal and I shouldn't do that because it's not fair to him, but I, I, I just look up to him. I always have, I've always respected him in a couple of different ways that are unique to him that make me feel like he's respectable. You know what I mean? And so I don't know. I always looked up to him. So I, him being my boss was not a problem at all. When he starts calling you about this new promotion, did you start watching it? Are you going, let me see what I'm getting into. Uh, no. what no. did you think of the shows? <laughs> had, you just jumped I had right never, in. I had never seen it before. Um, and I didn't care. Uh, I really didn't. I, I knew that, look, I'd worked for him. Yeah. I worked for him in USWA. So I knew what I knew that i knew it they could at least do that you know what i mean and now with the technology and all the advances uh technologically and the experiences they've had i knew it was going to be better than that and and i would and i was actually okay with doing that i'd have gone back to studio wrestling um because it was real fun and intimate and cool but like i said the money was was decent i trust jeff I knew it was going to, I knew they were going to give it a whirl at the old college try. And, uh, and the only thing we could do is try to hope it takes off. You know what I mean? At any point, did Jeff or Jerry tell you, Hey, we're not going to make it. We're, we're on the struggle bus. This is going downhill fast. Or this is part of no. you not being in the business mode. No. At all. And also that's not something that the Jarrett's will just go talking about, you know what I mean? Okay. Like they will talk about it inside, uh, you know, behind closed doors. I don't think that's anything a, a smart business man would be talking about. Jeff and I are very good friends. That doesn't mean he would come to me and tell me that kind of stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? That's his personal business stuff that I, if he needed me to, I could listen to that, but I, I don't know that I could offer him any, any uh, assistance with it other than being a, a sounding board for him, you know? And not that you would leak it, but if that's something that starts getting around the locker room, oh, yeah, then yeah, it causes no, chaos for sure. And so they wouldn't want that to get out in my opinion. Uh, it takes an influx of cash to bring people in in late September. One of those is you, uh, was yeah. it a money issue or you, like you said earlier, you were just waiting on the, the six months. To, uh, yeah. To I was just done. waiting uh, to be able to do it legally and travel and cross state lines and so forth and so on. Um, and people who have been on paper listening to this, both of them know, uh, <laughs> both of them know what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, so it was just a kind of, a uh, on hold got, it took that opportunity to get new gear made and the gear was very, uh, cheap and inexpensive and it looked as such, but that was, 
That was where I was at at the time, man. Like, I'm not going to spend a bunch of money on gear. I'll go out there and get my camo pants and do whatever I got to. Uh, if, you know, if John Cena can wrestle in jorts, surely I can wrestle in these <laughs> camouflage pants. Uh, man, see, if you would have had the, the wedding money, you could have got you some good looking gear. <laughs> I got, I got me some jorts. <laughs> uh, Stanton said, what surprised you the most when you got to TNA? Anything that stands out like, whoa, I didn't know it was going to be this way or no, anything I, like look, that? I would say, no, I think a lo locker room's a locker room and some locker rooms are better. And look, this was a tight locker room because I knew everybody there. A lot of the guys I had come up with were there with me. A lot of the guys that are coming up after me that I'd worked with on the indies and stuff were there. Kid Cash and... Uh, um, Wolfie D and Brian Lee. We talked about these guys. I worked with a lot of them in Smoky Mountain and stuff too. So it was, it was an awesome locker room. Um, but again, it was me and Conan and Ronnie Killings going to check the tire and the, you know, the air in the tires outside. And we, uh, you know, come back in and say, Oh, you know, uh, safety is paramount. So we got to check the tires every two hours in the car. And we would just go out there and get high and then come back in. And, <laughs> well, safety you know, is paramount. Yeah. <laughs> we would tell them um That's and everybody knew but that was our running rib like safety is paramount we got to go check the air in the tax well we appreciate everybody for joining us for another one dog we got one in man we got one in and i appreciate you sticking with me and you guys being patient while we try to figure this out i uh apologize for uh for the best of i hope everyone enjoyed it i know i did listening back to it um but I hope everybody else did. It's this new schedule I got. I'm going to figure it out, and we're going to continue on with the OU Didn't Know podcast. I appreciate, Cassio, you uh, filling shoes that were difficult to fill, but you damn sure do it. And so I appreciate you and the team always. Uh, without them, none of us none of us would be uh, doing this. Wesley and Steve and Dom, and uh, there's probably some I'm forgetting. But, yeah, Derek, Cassio, Chris, thank you. Yep. Thank you very much, man, uh, for this. And, uh, oh, you didn't know, listeners, what we, we could call our, I guess, the dog pound. Dog right? pound's easy, right? Our, that's the easy one. So, so dog pound, thank How about you, this? guys. Here's what we want. Follow us on Twitter and all social oh. media at you didn't know pod. And how about you let us know what the, what y'all should be called? Huh? That's why you get paid the big bucks, Cassie, <laughs> kid, because that's genius. We will ask the people we are planning to call something what they would like to be called. It's 2022. I think we're supposed to do that now. I think, I think we're, we ask we're them what they in. want to be called. We're yeah. locked in. Look, no more fan questions today. No. <laughs> I'm sick of answering them. We're done. <laughs> we are done. We got it in the books. You never know what's going to happen here on. Oh, you didn't know. Uh, I am Cassio for road dog, Brian James. We got four words for you. Oh, you didn't know. Bow, 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 bow. Mm -mm -mm -mm.